They were, compared to the rest of the community, I think they probably were well off because uh, the depression hit Austria very badly. You know, I was always scared of doing well. It was expected for you to uh, do well in Latin and Greek and have to learn all the hexameters uh, by heart. Uh, it wasn't exactly joyous, but looking back on it, uh, there must be some substance to that way of teaching. Then the war came. I was sent to England to, uh, to school and there. I started uh, expressing my interest in uh, technology and building. During the war, well, I had an unfortunate period where enemy aliens who lived in England were locked up, such as I was, uh, coming from um, Austria. Um, and uh, I was locked up and sent to Canada. And, uh, and we used to draw imaginary projects. And it was a great uh, escape, as it were, to the tedium of uh, prison life. Our boy all the way around, machine guns guarding it. And there you are, and you say, why the hell am I being locked up? I'm on, I'm on their side. I think ever since then, I've had a very healthy disregard for politicians, and particularly bureaucrats. Gropius was a great philosopher about which direction should architecture and design and industrial design take. What he made me understand uh, was that uh, there is nothing new, really, that architecture in the past has always been an amalgam of uh, the tastes of the time, the technology of the time. The conviction that I was subjected to uh, through the lectures that I heard from people like Gropius and Breuer left me with a, a deep-rooted conviction that all these nonsense, uh, fashionable things are simply transient and meaningless. And I told Breuer, look, uh, I think maybe I should go to Australia. And he says, oh, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't go there. Why? Uh, it's absolutely a barren place. There's nothing in the way of modern things you will find. And of course, he wanted me to, to stay put. A letter finally got from my mother uh, who said, we don't want to just have you come and visit. We want to commission you to design us a house. Well, that did it. You see, when you're 25 years old and uh, you have a captive client like a, a mother on the horizon, then that makes all the difference. I remember coming here in about September 1948. I had come prepared, having been briefed by my brother. Uh, he said, you won't find any modern furniture or modern materials here. It's very difficult. The difficulty in the late 40s was, of course, building materials. You could only build a house that was 12 squares. You know, there was so little building material to go around, it was almost like a rationing. You can, any family could only build that many squares. People had never seen a house that consisted of space, that had so much relationship to the outside. Every room has a big glass wall. Uh, the, the outdoors, the, the, the beautiful natural setting here became part of the interior decoration. Now, people had never seen that to that extent at that time. Houses had tended to have small windows, they were all covered up with curtains, and that's what they were used to. When people saw that, I find that uh, they responded very positively. A lot of people simply were staggered and loved it. Uh, I mean, they, it caused so much sensation here that I remember my mother on weekends, she virtually had to leave the house because they were four deep around the glass walls trying to look in and see, uh, you know, what, what this uh, house that's all written about is all about. So, uh, it caused a stir, but at the same time, people came to me and said, gee, I like that, and I want you to do one for me. And uh, that really is one of the reasons why I stayed in Australia. It was much harder for Breuer at that time, even in New York, to get commissions to build uncompromising modern houses. That's one of the things that made me stay here. It was a very fertile ground for a young architect to, to get started. They're the two tallest buildings in the country, 
One of them, Australia Square, has just reached its top floor, and the other one is the state office block. This is Gerald Stone reporting to you from the top of Australia's highest building, Australia Square in downtown Sydney. This is Gordon Bick reporting to you from the second highest building in Australia, the State Office Block, 34 storeys high. Hello, Gordon. How are things down there? We may not be as big as you, but we're certainly practical. What's that you say? I can't hear you. Architecture is uh, the highest form of art, by definition, the mother of all the arts, it says. A lot of people do buildings. That doesn't mean they put up architecture. There's a huge difference. And the missing link is, is it a work of art? You know, we desperately tried in a meeting at the town hall, there were, the whole profession was there, actually. Uh, we tried to make peace between the government and Utzon to let him be in charge. The committee was formed, Utzon in charge. That was the name of it. Um, well, everybody wanted him to stay, but on their terms, not on his terms. And that's what he wouldn't accept. And it was really tragic. The most important thing is really not so much to build only just one building, but the totality of the environment matters enormously. What people reject is that which is just expediency, is just building, which is lacking in skill, that they will reject. And unfortunately, so much of our world is just expedient building. It's not architecture. And after we got married, she said, you know, I'm going to change to architecture. Oh, I thought, well, amazing. Uh, and secretly, I thought, well, that'll take six months or a year, and then I'm sure she'll give it away. But not so. I think her knowledge of uh, the history and interactive uh, events in the world are far more mature and maybe deeper than, than mine. She's been a great support and uh, a great critic. It was a really constructive collaboration, which, uh, you know, my tendency is, of course, to move in the direction of the purely visual and sculptural, whereas uh, hers is common sense very often uh, that finally won out. We did our own house together. We've lived there for 27 years. I don't think I want to live anywhere else, uh, ever. A marvelous house. When there's a design problem, there's too many things going on in the office, but I sort of assemble all the details in my head. I come home here and I find that I do the best uh, basic disposition of parts for building. I do that here in the evening. And now I've come back to uh, build what really will be the biggest project uh, of my whole career. Uh, it is built uh, on top of a covering of the expressway that runs along the River Danube, and on it we're going to build 660 apartments, all of which will have a view of the water. Uh, it's a unique opportunity to not just do a building, but to do a total part of a, almost like a total community, with schools, uh, with shopping centers, with community facilities. Uh... Architecture is an art form. You can hold up things and build things and people react emotionally. 
it bespeaks the laws of nature. People feel that intuitively. Music is ephemeral, you hear it and then it's gone. With architecture, if it really is so absolutely beautiful, it is literally frozen. That's why they've called it, uh, you know, frozen music. Commodity, firmness, and delight. Those are the three things that Vitruvius, a uh, Roman architect, said. Uh, in other words, it shall be comfortable, it shall be solid, it shall be stand up to the wear and tear of the, of the environment. Uh, and delight, delight. It should be a pleasure to be in and work in and see and so on. I'm now 80 years old. I don't particularly feel any different to what I always felt, but I'm supposed to be on my last legs. It's far from the truth. Other things in my life, well, as, uh, human relationships, of course, are all important. And uh, the thing that uh, I sort of measure myself against uh, is uh, they were, compared to the rest of the community, I think they probably were well off because uh, the Depression hit Austria very badly. You know, I was always scared of doing well. It was expected for you to uh, do well in Latin and Greek and have to learn all the hexameters uh, by heart. Uh, it wasn't exactly joyous, but looking back on it, uh, that architecture in the past has always been an amalgam of uh, the tastes of the time, the technology of the time, the conviction that I was subjected to uh, through the lectures that I heard from people like Gropius and Breuer left me with a, a deep-rooted conviction that all these nonsense uh, fashions, such as I was uh, coming from um, Austria, um, and uh, I was locked up and sent to Canada. And, uh, and we used to draw imaginary projects. And it was a great uh, escape, as it were, to the tedium of uh, prison life. Our boy all the way around, machine guns guarding it. And there you are, and you say, why the hell am I being locked? There must be some substance to that way of teaching. Then the war came. I was sent to England to, uh, to school and there. I started uh, expressing my interest in uh, technology and building. During the war, well, I had an unfortunate period where enemy aliens who lived in England were locked up. Locked up, and I'm, I'm on their side. I think ever since then, I've had a very healthy disregard for politicians, and particularly bureaucrats. Gropius was a great philosopher about which direction should architecture and design and industrial design take. What he made me understand uh, was that uh, there is nothing new really. 